Okay, let's get started. Um, thank you for attending this session. This is the last session for this meeting. So um, my name is Iris Ding. I'm coming from Intel. So uh, my co-speaker Malini cannot be here today due to the travel issues. So I will cover the whole topic today. And thanks to my colleague here, um, did also did a lot of contribution to this topic. So um, today I will share something about Cloud HSM and what the challenge you might be facing if you're using Cloud HSM and how we can overcome these challenges using distributed HSM. And finally, I will show you some user cases that you can leverage it in your environment. So um, HSM or Hardware Secure Module, uh, this is not a very new technology. Actually, it has existed for a long time. So basically, uh, you need a specific pluggable hardware that you can store your uh, credential information, like private keys in this device, and also you can perform your crypto operations in this device. So uh, you can see it also means you need some additional cost because you need a specific hardware to, and you also need to maintain it. So um, besides this, um, you know, the security is coming more and more important today. You can see from today's con, right, it's cloud native security con. So uh, also in the cloud environment, uh, this also bring a lot of uh, security requirement. So this is some report for the HSM market. Um, so it said uh, uh, due to 2028, the HSM market will be reached to uh, $2 billion. So it's a huge market. So uh, as we said, um, a lot of workload has been onboarded to the cloud environment. So for the, currently, most of the major cloud service providers has already had their cloud HSM offering. So uh, it means the cloud provider will host the HSM hardware in their cloud infrastructure. So um, for the customers for, or for the end users, uh, this brings uh, a lot of benefits. For example, uh, if you want to consume the HSM as a service, you can just consume it. Uh, it provides you a lot of flexibility. So um, basically, if you want to consume the cloud HSM, uh, you need to follow some uh, basic steps. So um, most of the cloud HSM will follow in the PKCS 11 standard. So firstly, uh, you might want to onboard your security keys in the cloud HSM. So the cloud HSM, after you onboarding your private keys, it will give you a private key handler, a key reference here. Then you can use this key handler in your application. Then when your application is running, he can use the uh, key handler and send the crypto operation request to the cloud HSM. So cloud HSM actually will perform the crypto operation in his environment and give the crypto operation result to the application. So you can see actually in this scenario, uh, the crypto operation is happened remotely uh, against your application. So obviously it will bring your uh, high latency for the crypto operations. At the same time, it also means you will have lower transaction rate. Um, at the same time, uh, sometimes you want to migrate between different cloud providers. So although uh, the, most of them are following the same PKSS 11 standard, but the API might have a very, uh, might have a slight difference. So it will bring you migration difficulty. Um, the last part is on the edge side. Actually, there is no suitable replacement for the cloud HSM. So how to overcome all these challenges? This is what the distributed HSM we have brought up. So uh, you can see from this picture, the big difference here is Distributed HSM is actually sitting, sitting alongside your application. So in this picture, you can see actually each application has their own distributed HSM here. Um, also, um, the crypto operations will happen locally in the distributed HSM. Um, so, um, so it brings a, a lot of benefit for you. It firstly, it's high secured, and uh, even on the edge, you can you know. Um, have your own distributed HSM and do the crypto operations in, inside it. So it is a lower latency and will bring you great throughput. 
Uh, also, because this digital SM doesn't rely on additional hardware comparing to the traditional, traditional HSM, so it also means lower cost. Um, besides this, you can see actually there are four steps here. There are additional step one. So um, this means um, uh, before you give your credential information to the distributed HSM, HSM actually you can ask uh, uh, evidence beforehand to let the distributed SM to prove to you that I'm actually a trusted, a trusted party. So uh, all this give you a lot of benefit here. So you might be curious how we can achieve this. So um, the answer is using trusted execution environment. So let's see what's the trusted, trusted execution environment. So um, basically, this is coming from the confidential computing area. So um, trusted execution environment provides you an isolated or protected environment to run your authorized code. So uh, from security perspective, um, the data can be divided into three categories, uh, data at rest, data in emotion, and data in use. So for data at rest, um, the most uh, popular technology is, you know, before you save your data, you can encrypt it and then save it in the disk or some, you know, storage. Um, data in motion means um, typically you, you want, you can use in TOS or even mutual TOS to encrypt your traffic uh, when the traffic is in transition. Um, the last part is data in use. So this is the major focus for TEE. So it means when the the data is currently executing. It is protected as well. So um, basically, TE will uh, require some hardware or firmware support. It can, you, you can see from the right part, uh, it actually uh, isolates applications and some privileged software like the operating system or even the, um, the hypervisor cannot access this, 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 this memory region. And only the CPU is trusted. So um, as I said, it also can do the demonstration to you, like the code or attestation. So you can see this is actually a trusted party. For example, this is really a trusted execution environment, and I can for sure deliver my secret to you and let you run my um, crypto operations within, within your, uh, your TE environment. Sorry, my computer hung here. So, um, sorry for the uh, interruption. So, um, Intel SGX uh, software guide extension is a kind of this uh, TEE. So, it's a process based TEE. Uh, so, basically, um, Intel CPU has some specific instructions that you can leverage it to uh, create a protected environment uh, and uh, let you to. Uh, it, the protected environment in, in the top, uh, it is called SGX Enclave. So you can see from the right side picture, uh, it, it looks like a protected cage that other parties, even like the operating system or the firmware, they cannot go into there and execute and uh, access this memory region. Um, so um, basically, um, if you want to leverage SGX, you can write your application and divide it into two parts, the trusted part and the untrusted part. Only the trusted part can uh, go into the SGX enclave. So the, this memory region is encrypted and it has strict access control. Um, so the remote attestation means uh, it will prove to you it's a really trusted body. And the ceiling means um, even if the computer has been restarted, uh, you can still get your secret back. So um, SGX has been in the market actually for a long time as well. So basically, uh, the current most of the current uh, um, Intel server like the Icelake has already supported this uh, function. Uh, so if you are interested, you can 
uh, using this link to find the detailed uh, uh, production information that support FGX. Uh, so maybe actually in your head, in your, if you have an Intel server, it's actually already supported this. So you just need to you know, enable it in, in BIOS and uh, you can uh, leverage this capability in your environment as well. So um, let's see some user case, how we land this in our um, real world. So in, in today's session, I will use Istio Service Mesh as an example. So you know, um, Istio, the security is a, a important part for the, uh, that it provides. So it has two cases, the mutual TIS. So this is majorly using the communication within the mesh. The other is the gateway. So it will handle the traffic coming uh, through the, uh, through the outside world, like the user request coming through the gateway and then go into the mesh inside. So in, in these two cases, they have a private key here. Um, and, uh, and currently, the Istio upstream, the private key will be in clear text. So it uh, will bring security exposure um, uh, for you. Uh, a lot of security risk. So you can imagine if the private key has been um, uh, compromised, it will bring a lot of trouble here. So um, this is the new architecture that we leverage uh, the distributed HSM uh, that can, can enhance all these uh, um, risks. So you can see here, uh, the, well, for the Envoy sidecar, uh, we, we will inject uh, uh, SDS server here. There is SDS server here. This is a new component developed by ourselves. And uh, you can see there is a lock in the Envoy and the SDS server. The, this lock means there is a um, HSM alongside with them, which is implemented using SGX Enclave. So let's take a closer look at the Envoy side. So you can see here, um, there is a, so for the Envoy side, uh, they by default using Boring SSL for their, as their SSL library. So Boring SSL has a um, private key provider mechanism. So we just leverage it and provide a SGX private key provider and uh, we will have, we will utilize the crypto API toolkit to uh, generate or uh, establish an SDX environment for us. So this is the detail in the Envoy side. Uh, this is the uh, SDX server side. So this is actually running uh, SDX enclave. Uh, the distributed SSM is running uh, alongside it. So uh, basically, um, you, we have local HSM via SGX Enclave, and the crypto operations are happening locally, and the credentials can be synced from remote HSM or locally generated. So for mutual TIS case, the private key is generated locally. For the gateways, uh, it can be uploaded from remote key store, key store, like your vault or you have your own key, key server. You can sync the keys securely in the en Enclave. So uh, for the mutual TOS and the gateway, um, we also can, well, they also have the data plan part and the control plan part. So I will split them uh, and uh, let's take a look at them one by one. So the first user case is the mutual TOS control plan part. This is the picture for the current uh, Istio uh, flow. So um, basically, um, Istio will let you um, uh, delegate your CE functions to the external side, so to the external CE. So um, the whole flow is like, um, um, first, the, 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 there is a SDS server running inside the Istio agent, um, yeah, running, running in here, uh, and the Envoy, we are sitting uh, together with the Istio agent. This is a whole Istio proxy port. So when the, the Istio proxy port is started, it will, um, generate the private key pair. So you can see this marked in red. The private key is in clear text in memory. Uh, this, is, this is the first step. Then uh, it will generate the CSR. I mean, the Istio agent will generate the CSR, the certificate signing request, and it will send to Istio D, and Istio D will send out the CSR to the Kubernetes API server, and the CSR will finally um, go into a CE. So in our case, we have a CE uh, component is called Trusted Certificate Service. So this service will get the CSR and sign the third back. So you can see now in step seven, step eight, and finally the private key and the third will be delivered to Envoy. So 
Now Envoy has the private key and the third, but now it's in clear text. So this is the original flow. Let's see, uh, after our enhancement, um, what's the current flow now? So here, um, we can see the SD, we have the SDS server here, but it's not running inside the Istio agent. It's a, it's a new component we, just, we, we, we newly added. So this SDS server um, is running here, so it has an enclave here. So when the, it will sit in uh, alongside the envoy, so this will uh, running in the same pod. So when this is started, it will first uh, initialize the SDX enclave and will generate the private key pair in this enclave. So you can see now the key has been guarded using this trusted execution environment. And then it will generate a CSR and the code. So code is some, some evidence to uh, prove that I'm really a trusted environment. Then, um, Comparing with the original CSR, the difference here is the code has been embedded into the CSR as, as an extension. So now the CSR has been generated and following the original flow coming to the uh, trusted certificate service. So trusted certificate service will recognize this extension and extract the code and it will generate a code attestation custom results. So we have the code attestation controller here. So it will, uh, using, it will get the code and call our uh, Intel's uh, attestation service to do the attestation to, to make sure um, this is really a trusted hardware. Uh, it's a, a, a very uh, healthy uh, and secured environment. Then after this attestation has been done, uh, the TCS, uh, I mean the trusted certificate service, it will sign the third back. So if the attestation failed, you will you cannot get the third back. So so you can see all this all this chain is 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 very secured. And finally, uh, the, the 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 third will come back. Um, and then you can see here the the private key um, actually in this step it, it has been sealed using the CTK token file because this. These two enclaves are sitting in the same pod, so it can get the sealed key to into his enclave. And uh, because the, in, in this channel, in this green channel, uh, the certificate and the private key config, uh, we will generate the related information. So now the envoy will get the SDX private key provider information and the send set back. So this is the whole flow um, after our enhancement. So you can see now uh, it also leverages the external certificate authority uh, and the private case in the whole, in the whole uh, path is, not, is never exposed in clear text. And the cert is only issued if the attestation pa passed and the crypto operations can be done locally. So um, this is the another user case. Uh, the gateway case. So you can see um, from the east upstream, the gateway case to upload, I mean, to make the key available to the envo uh, is a long journey. So you can see due to time limitation, I do not want, do not, can, I cannot go through the details, but uh, if you are interested, you can, you know, uh, uh, take a look at this picture. Um, but uh, basically you can see in all these steps, this private key is in clear text. For example, in these steps, in the first step, uh, the admin uploaded the private key and the third in the secret. So anyone can, if he has the authority, he can get the secret and he can get the private key. So it's really dangerous. And it's a long journey, you know, in the Istio D, in the Istio agent, and finally in Envo, all this in clear text. So this is the, the, the flow after our enhancement. So um, you can see here, uh, the first step is get, uh, create a gateway customer results. Uh, and then um, the, after the, the, the SDS server is also running here. So you can see the SDS server uh, is the, actually the same SDS server because the, we, we, we using the same SDS server serve, serve both the gateway and the MTR, MTRS case. So the SDS server will has be um, moved out from Istio D and it's coming here. Uh, and uh, 
for, from this long journey, um, it will come into the enclave. So maybe I can explain a, a further because um, this uh, this is um, a little complex. So first, um, the, the, the admin creates the gateway custom resource, uh, and then the SDS server will watch this custom resource, and uh, after that, it will initialize the SDX enclave, and it will create the key pair. But this key pair is not you know, the final key pair for Envoy. It's just using to wrap in user's private key here. So the KMI here actually is a key storage server. So basically, you can re replace it using your own, uh, with your own key storage server. So um, you can see in the this is the first step, the second step, and then we will generate a code like previous case and the public key here, and then the attention controller will help us do the attestation. Meanwhile, because in the gateway custom resource, you will give the key handler information. Uh, in, in the KMI here, or, or your key storage. Uh, so uh, you can, uh, so the attached controller will help you wrap the private key using the public key generated here. So it means only this guy, this SDX enclave guy, because the private key is sitting here, so only him can unwrap the key. So this makes sure that the, the whole chain is secured. So now after the wrapped key coming here, uh, and it will be unwrapped, and then finally it will come into this animal guy. So this is the whole flow. Let me know if you have any question. Um, so the, yeah, previously they, they are in clear text, and uh, the private keys are uploaded externally. Um, so after it's also um, uh, the private keys is also coming outside. Uh, but uh, the, the whole upload chain is secured and uh, the private key is never exposed uh, outside in clear text. Um, and uh, the keys only get updated if the attestation passed. And uh, finally, the crypto operation is happened locally. So let's take a look at the data plan part. Uh, the data plan part means when the traffic coming, how it happens. So this is the original how Envoy works. So when there is a new HTTPS request comes, the TLS hash it will happen here. So the borrowing SSL library uh, will using the private key in memory to do the sign or decrypt operation and then return the result back. Now, because uh, Envoy has the SDX enclave here and we have the SDX private key provider here. So now after, uh, after we get the TLS hash it request, uh, this request will be delegated to SDX private key provider and this provider will send the request to the local SDX enclave and all the sign and the decrypt operation will happen in this trusted environment and then finally it will get the result back. So um, this is um, very secured and uh, because the crypto operation has happened uh, locally, so the performance penalty is very little. Um, the other case is the certificate authority case. So, um, so in, in, in the CE in the CE case, um, the CE also need a private key here. So uh, our solution is called trusted certificate service. So it can handle incoming uh, certificate signing request. So in this, um, the t trusted certificate service is also has a SDX enclave. So it it supports two cases: self-signed third uh, or or the uh, external uploaded the CE case. So for the, the first case, the CE the private key will generate the locally and we are serving and using this private key to handle the incoming CSRs. In the latter case, uh, the private key will be uploaded the other side from other side world. So a little similar to the gateway case, we will also do the attestation and wrap the key and unwrap the key. So uh, this is the detailed flow um, for for the for this. So the, the, the upper part is how we upload the case, and the latter part is how, you know, if you leverage it in Istio D, how, in Istio, how you can leverage it. Uh, this is the some sample YAML file that you can leverage this, this, this solution. Um, so um, actually, um, this solution, you know, the HSM server, we have already open source in the Istio ecosystem. 
on the on the data GitHub repo, and all the onward changes also in public repo. So you can just grab that this that, that repo uh, and uh, using this YAML file to have a try if you have interest. So uh, some future step we want to take, you know. Um, Actually, there are a lot of cloud HSM here. We want to do some adapter here that can, you know, if, the, if your keys are uh, stored in this area and your application, you know, is remote to this one, then we can have an adapter here to help you sync the private keys or any credential information in your local distributed HSM, then you can do the operation locally. So we, we hope we can pre provide a unified API uh, for the users. So whether your application is on AWS or, or, or Microsoft, you can use this unified API and get the benefit for the distributed HSM. Uh, and then, uh, you know, all the crypto operations can happen locally. Uh, these are some uh, GitHub repo we used. So the first one is uh, uh, Istio repo, um, the second one is N1 part, and then the SDH uh, server part, this is under uh, Istio repo. Uh, this is the C one. Um, this is our uh, Intel key storage reference architecture, but actually um, you can use your own key storage server. Um, and this is the C, uh, this is the C, uh, this is the attention controller part, and uh, we also have an EHSM solution, so it's open source. Uh, if it's also leveraging SDX and Clay, so you can uh, have a try. And this, you know, for the Istio part, we actually rely on the external CA function, so this is the reference document. Okay, um, yeah, so uh, I hope you can explore and join us and uh, you know all this github repo is public and uh, if you have any questions or issues um, you can just submit it um, uh, any prs are just are very welcome yeah that's all thank you thank you thank you very much